use. And just so you know, there's one other way you can do this from a standpoint of uh, kind of for free. Um, there is a Perl script this guy Mike Hardy wrote that uh, you can go and you can kind of modify and do your own kind of thing. He's got the pieces already written and laid out for you so that you can actually get your chunk sizes and do your own kind of dynamic test and try to figure it out from there. So, <clears throat> so now I'm going to switch over and hopefully video and Yep. Five demos. Oh my God. Okay, so we're on the planet. Um, it's functional, but it's pretty ugly. Uh, it's 79 bucks. It does standard data recovery stuff. It does. Uh, it does all the Linux, basically EXT, EXT2, 3. Riser, it does UFS, it does uh, FAT, NTFS, uh, Mac OS, uh, HFS Plus. So it pretty much does everything from that standpoint in addition to doing RAID arrays. So for 79 bucks, you almost can't go wrong. Uh, it doesn't assist so much. Like it doesn't try to figure things out for the most part. It will give you information and feedback and you just kind of have to know what to do with it from there. As a breakdown of this, it's called R Studios, and uh, you can find it online or whatever, 79 bucks. Uh, so basically you have a list of your drives over here and then you have all the information that it's going to feed back over here depending on what you're doing. And then a log basically that starts across the bottom. So now my first thing is somehow I created a DD image. I'm assuming that most of you know how to do that at this point. If you don't know how to make a DD image, you've got some practice to do before you get this far. Uh, or you're going to use hardware or software or you know, some GUI or something. But you'll, this tool will actually do it for you if you actually have a drive. But if you have physical damage and physical bad sectors, you're going to be struggling with that using some things like DD Rescue or something like that to actually get your sectors back. Or uh, there's a couple others that do like reverse imaging, like uh, My Rescue and DD Rescue will do it too. Um, or FTK, FTK Imager, things like that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take my DD images and I'm going to add them to this list so that I can work with them. So I'm just going to go and say open my image files and I have three DD images that are already done. Now I happen to know in this one what the order was. Like if you took the drives out, when you initially took the drives out, if you can get somebody to number them for you when they're going to mail them to you or if you're not the person taking them out, that's the most important part because you can eliminate most of your choices by making sure you know the order, everything else you can guess at and make it pretty quick. Uh, otherwise, you've got to actually rotate through orders all the time. But uh, so I can show you what to do if you assume that there's, there's, you don't know what the order is as well. So I'm going to open these three images, and it's going to add these three images to my list. And so right away for me, um, just so you guys know, on this one I used a high point controller. So I used a high point, uh, um, it's a RAID 5 array high point controller. Uh, 374 or something like that is the chipset. It's the whole set that they sell. It's also made it into the Adaptex. Um, very few of the RAID 5 drives will have a signature either at the beginning. A Dell array will. Uh, there's a few, you know, a few of them will. But for the most part, you're not going to get a signature. There's an HP RAID array that'll have a signature. But most of the time, you won't know your order. So got to kind of figure that out. So I know right away, I've got a partition one that it says it found an NTFS signature for. So I know I have an NTFS volume here, and I have three 8 gig drives uh, in a row, and depending on numbering or whatever. So I've got these three images added to my stuff. So now I'm going to create. We have a choice here. If I was doing, uh, depending on which one I actually want to do, whether or not I'm going to do a virtual stripe set uh, or a RAID 5 array and the volume sets. So you have your choices from your setup. Basically what we're going to do is dynamically create a fake kind of RAID array in software is what we're going to do. So if I was doing zero or something, I'd use one of the, one of the others. But I'm going to do a RAID 5. So when I make a RAID 5 array, it just creates this fake drive that shows up here in the middle. And it's not always obvious what you can do with it. It's kind of a, it will do drag and drop kind of stuff, but it's kind of painful. It's a lot easier for me if I come over here and I say, okay, fine, I'm on my virtual RAID 5 and it's asking me questions over here now. I've got boxes I can try to figure out what I'm going to do. I can right click and the important part here is that yes, I can see my partition, but my partition is going to be at an offset. So my partition is going to be 63 uh, sectors into the drive. So I don't want to add the partition. I want to add physical disks. If you happen to have one that has an offset, like maybe the Dell RAID array has 128K offset, you can actually set that. It'll be over here in the right-hand side. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down and say, oh, look, I've got a RAID 1. I've got the first drive. I'm going to add it. So when I add it, it'll remove it from my list. 
And then over on the right, you'll see an offset. If I decided that I needed an offset, maybe for the first drive or each individual drive, I could choose that over there. So again, back to the controller, you go and you look it up and you figure out what that's going to be. Uh, then I need to add my next drive. So uh, you'll see first, there's also a choice at the top, add missing disk. So in a RAID 5, you're missing one disk, but you've got two disks. You can dynamically rebuild it here in software. Um, and you'll see that my disk, the other one now is gray, and it has removed it from my list. So now I can actually just go down and select the others and just add all of the ones I want to my array. And I can shuffle them around, move them up and down. I can turn them on and off. They actually have an on and off button, which is the equivalent to power and turning it off uh, and then adding your offsets and stuff. But what you'll notice here is that right away it has given me kind of a dynamic configuration. And I can do a couple of things. Like I can tell it every time I make a change, automatically apply all these changes to whatever I'm doing in my data recovery. So I can test like multiple sequences of, of tests and it'll just dynamically change them on the fly for me and I don't have to do anything. Um, and then you'll see this is based on the drive. So drive one, drive two, drive three, and you can see the slice sizes themselves. And you can move them around. Like you can actually go here and click on them and you can decide which drive it's gonna be. The, uh, the parity, like so for instance, you know, the exclusive or of the slices equals parity. Well, they're trying to give you an indication here if they're pink, they tell you right here it's an invalid block order. So if there's a pink box, it's basically the idea that what if you selected this number and it was in this row, that that parity is going to be wrong. And so your calculation is not going to work. So you can try to figure it out from this if you wanted to. You can still force your own, choose your own, do whatever you want. It'll let you do it all on your own. But it's trying to hint and give you a little bit of a calculation and doing some, some work for you. Uh, so at least it's letting you know that. But let's say, all right, fine. For the sake of time, I could go through each one of these sizes, but you can see that it's already given me all my sizes for my choices, and I can just keep choosing. But I know that the default is most of the time 64. So most of the time, I'm going to start with that and then try to figure out whether I'm going to go higher or lower. And you'll see really quick if it's a, a 512K or something like that, because all your pictures will look good uh, under, under 512K. It'll, it'll come up really fast, and you'll be able to figure out what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at 64K. And let's just assume that it's standard. If I didn't know any better, I would just say that it's standard. And I have three rows. The rest of it's all set up. So now over here on the left-hand side, it has now made me my fake partition. And it's now the size that it's supposed to be because I've added the drives together. And so it's bounding them all together in their fashion. And so I'll see that I have this 15.7 gig drive over here. So I can click on this drive. And there's a couple of things I can do, but I'm going I'm to add this one slower step here. Uh, I can right click on this drive and I can say, okay, fine, I want to test on my own visually what, uh, what kind of uh, recovery that I'm getting here. So I can go and hit scan. Now, the, the big deal here is if you have an operating system on your disk and you have, say, the MST, you have a catalog of your disk, normally you could just go look at the catalog and you can say, oh, look, let's go see where these files are and these clusters are and reassemble them without scanning your hard drive. The MFT is the catalog of where your files are and has their names and everything there. Uh, scanning is actually the slower process, which says, hey, I've got a file header, and I know that maybe a JPEG has this file string, FF, D8FF, and I'm going to go look for that JPEG file and cut it out and spit out a file. You guys get with this so far? You know what I mean? So there's these two different methods. Most people don't know when they start their software which one they're using or even you know, thought about it. But most of the time, if it scans the disk and it takes 20 minutes, an hour, three days to produce you a tree, it's scanned. It did not use the MFT or the catalog. Or on HFS, there's actually a catalog that just shows you your files. That would actually work in a minute. You could just say, show it to me and let me see what I got. Um, in this situation, from this standpoint, I already know I got NTFS. I don't need to scan for HFS or FAT or EXT. So it will just take me more time if I leave those enabled. So I'm just going to turn those off. And I'm going to leave those alone. And I'm going to go for some file types. And so I'm going to say, I will only want you to look for these file types, not the 100 that are selected by default. Almost every application has these two or 300 that are selected by default, and they try everything. But I just want a quick answer. So I'm going to go down to my graphics tab. I'm going to go down and find you know, my JPEG and my digital camera pictures. That's all I'm going to select, or MP3s if I wanted to do that, or a movie. Uh, and then just take that and say, oh,